Math 265A, Cuesta College, I'm Joe Vasta, and we are covering section 5.1 in our calculus book, Approximating Areas Under Curves. Okay, so here's the problem. Find the bug's displacement over the time interval 1 to 9. Now, we've done problems like this where we are finding the bug's displacement, which is the net area. And in this case, it's going to be the area between this curve and the t-axis from one right here to nine right there. So we are to find this area right here. We find that area, I'm not going to color it all in, but you find that area, you find the bug's displacement. Now the problems that we did in a previous bug lectures, um, the function was like straight lines, and so we were just finding areas of triangles or rectangles at some times. But now we're finding the area of something that is not so easy to find. So. Let's go ahead and come back to this problem. In your homework, they're going to have a few problems that have sigma notation or summation notation. And we want to go over this because this is going to come up in the theory of this. And um, you'll have homework problems like this. So to remember what this is, this is a Greek letter sigma. And we are going to sum from 1 to 4 on this formula. So we put one into that formula. So two times one plus three. And then we add that and we put two into the formula, two times two plus three. Then we go ahead and we put three into the formula, two times three plus three. And then we go ahead and, and put four in the formula. That's our stop point. Here's where we start, there's where we stop. So this is two times four plus three. So this gives us a five plus seven plus nine plus 11. Okay, so 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, so 32 is the sum of that. Okay, let's go do another problem. Um, so this um, index here could, could be the letter N. Um, sometimes they'll use K or I or J. Um, and it doesn't always have to start at one. It could start at zero. It could start at 10 if you'd like. So this is your start point. That's your stop point, And you're summing up on this formula. So this is 0 squared minus 3. Then we end up putting the next integer in there. So um, that would be 1 squared minus 3 plus, and then um, we have our stopping point, 2 squared minus 3. So what are we, what are we adding up? We're adding up a negative 3 plus um, a negative 2 plus, and then 4 minus 3, that's a 1. This gives me the sum of negative 4. So that is how you do summation notation. And maybe I put too many problems on one page, but oh well. Your homework is also going to ask you to write this in the sigma notation. So sigma notation, and when I say summation notation, which is funner to say, by the way, um, sigma and summation on that, they're interchangeable. So we are supposed to write this in sigma notation. And um, you have root one. So we're not supposed to like put this in our calculator. We're supposed to use this notation here. So our answer is going to have something that looks like that. Well, what do each of these terms have in common? They have a square root. And um, we can, let's just let n be the um, variable we're going to use. So I'll put an n under there, square root of n, and our n's going to start 
at what value? It's going to start at 1 and go all the way up to 6. So that's what they're asking you to do in your homework. Just a review of sigma notation because you'll see a little bit when we talk about something called the Riemann sum, but also you'll see sigma notation in calculus too when you do um, series. Now, sigma notation is not unique. So this, is, this answer is not unique, I mean. Meaning we could have, we could have said for our answer n equals and start wherever we want. I'm going to start at zero and we could have gone, well then if we did that, we still want the square root of one. So we'd have to go n plus one. So you put zero in, you get that. You put one in, you get that. And you wouldn't go up to six, you would only go up to five. You're still counting six things. And so there is another acceptable answer. Most people would write this answer right here. Okay, our last problem for the sigma notation review is this one right here. And we're supposed to put this in terms of, of sigma notation. Now this looks a little weird, like there's no patterns here. Um, nine over two, and then we have a four here, but we can write four as something over two. We can multiply top and bottom of four over one by two on the top, two on the bottom. And so I'm gonna rewrite this as eight over two plus nine over two plus, and then five could be 10 over two plus 11 over two. So we actually um, made four and five, we turned them into fractions that have twos on the bottom. And now we can see, oh, well, look, there seems to be a pattern here. We'll, we'll start it at n equals something. And the pattern is everything's a fraction with two on the bottom. And on the top, it just looks like 8, 9, 10, 11. So I'm going to go ahead and put an N there. I'm going to start this at 8. So look, that gives me the 8 over 2. 9 over 2, 10 over 2, 11 over 2. I'll stop it at 11. And so this was a brief review of sigma notation, which will be used in Calculus 2. And you'll see part of it on the more theoretical part of this lecture. So we're coming back to this. We want to approximate areas under curves. And so you might look at your book and it might look a little complicated. All you're going to be doing for a lot of your homework problems, besides some of these problems here, is you're going to be computing areas of rectangles and adding those areas up. So that's all it's going to be. Um, we want to try to make this um, be simpler than it really looks in the book. Okay, so here is um, our problem. We're going to try to attack this problem here where we're finding the um, area under the curve on a certain time interval. So look what we have here. We have, it says, a bug is moving on a number line. This is our old bug problem. Time is in seconds, position is in feet, velocity is feet per second. The time interval is from 1 to 9. So um, look what we have here. Let me go ahead and do what I did on the other one. 1 to 9. It says divide the time interval into n subintervals of equal length. Okay, so we'll get into that, what that means. Use rectangles to approximate the displacement in the time interval 1 to 9. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Problem number one asks to use the right endpoint of each subinterval. Wow, so we've got from one to nine. That actually, you know, when you go from one to nine, that has a distance of eight. And we are supposed to divide the time intervals, that's eight seconds into two sub-intervals of equal time. So it would just be the first four seconds, which would be, you know, two, three, four, five, and then the next four seconds, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what I'm going to do, now this is going to be completely new for a lot of you, is divide that time interval. So what does that mean? So look at the time. So we have, you know, one here, 
five here, nine there. And it says use the right end point. Okay, so it says use rectangles and we're going to draw two rectangles using the right end point. So look at this sub interval. So there's two sub intervals. Um, so two sub intervals and they are one to five and from five to nine and they have equal length four seconds here four seconds here right so you need to know like this first sub interval we're going to use five we're going to use this and so what does it mean you go to this guy right here who's on the right side and you draw a rectangle and then your next sub interval, five to nine, you go to the right side, which is nine. Okay, it hits the velocity right there. You are going to draw another rectangle that has um, base of four, and it looks like this. So as you can see, we have two rectangles I'm going to color them in. I'm not going to spend forever coloring them in, but yes, it's. I just want to illustrate the fact that what they want us to do in this problem is they want us to, um, I don't know what I'm doing there, by the way. They want us to find the displacement, or actually approximate it by finding the area of these two rectangles. So we don't know how to find the area of this complicated thing, but we can find the area of those two rectangles. And um, we are gonna go like base times height. So the base of the first one is four. So let's, let's look at the areas, the area of the red stuff. So let me uh, make that clear. The area of the red stuff. We're going to go base times height, so 4 times the height, and the height is 1. So that is the area of that first rectangle. The second rectangle is going to be base times height. The height is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it looks like we have 4 plus 20 which gives us 24. Now we are um, approximating the displacement. We're gonna say 24 feet that the bug has traveled in that time interval to the right on the number line. And that is the answer. Now, do you think that's a really good approximation of the area under the curve from one to nine? And the answer is no, that's probably, you know, I mean, look at this, we're leaving off this and we're taking a little more in right there. So it's, you know, it's an approximation. It's a terrible one because we only have two rectangles. Let's go ahead and do the next problem. So there's a lot of problems like this in your homework where you're using rectangles. Sometimes they'll draw the pictures and sometimes they'll draw the rectangles for you. And sometimes they won't. So we'll do a few problems here. Okay. Use the left endpoint of each sub interval we are going from one to nine so here we are from one to nine we break the two sub intervals okay so we we break this interval into two sub intervals and we'll do it just like we did in the last problem so look at this we have that right there and so your first sub intervals from one to five and the next one's from five to nine so this is what we're looking at one five, nine. Okay, um, what we want to do, it says, it says, so here's the first sub interval, we want to use the left end point. So the left end point for the first sub interval is this one, and that's how we're going to get the height of the first rectangle. Let's go ahead and draw the first rectangle, which will have a base of four. 
So that's what the first one looks like. And the second one, we are using the left endpoint. So, so here's the first subinterval. So the second subinterval goes from 5 to 9, and we use the left endpoint which is this guy right here. I mean, this is where he is on the graph of V of T. And so we are going to draw that right there. Then we're going to go ahead and take, compute the area of these two rectangles. Let's go ahead and use green for that. Okay, so look at this. I'm computing that right there. Repeating that right there. Okay, you see those two green rectangles? And um, we're going to get a different approximation than we got on problem number one. So the area, let's go ahead and underline that in green, is going to be base times height. So base is four times the height. So look at the first rectangle. The height is two. Plus, now here's the second rectangle. It, the base is 4 and the height is just 1. So this gives me 8 plus 4. Um, and the answer then happens to be 12 feet. So that's a really bad approximation. It's still an approximation, but, but look at this. I mean, look, you're missing all this area right here, and it's approximating the area under the um, original curve using rectangles. And in fact, when you compare with the first one that we did, I mean, look at the first one we did and how it looks. That one probably does a better job, the red one, than the green one, and that would depend on the way the graph looks. Okay, so... These things have names that we're doing, but we're not ready for that yet because we have to introduce you to another problem here, another kind of problem. And that would be this one right here. Same time interval from 1 to 9. So I'm going to go ahead and draw. But did you see what I mean? Like when you do your homework, you're just going to be adding the areas of rectangles when you do your homework. So the notation might look worse than it really is. Um, use the midpoint of each subinterval, n equals 2. So n equals 2 tells you how many subintervals there are, and the, those subintervals should be equal length. So we'll do what we did in the other problems. And now it says use the midpoint. Okay, notice how on the first one we use the right endpoint. You know, okay, so look at, let's put these in orange again. And so in that first subinterval, we used 5 for the height of the rectangle. And um, when we did the left one, we used, we used 1 for the height. Now they want us to use the midpoint. So what is the midpoint between 1 and 5? It's the halfway point. It is 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a line going up to the graph. Well, maybe I shouldn't make a line going up to the graph, but I am going to use this because it's at the midpoint of the first subinterval, I'm going to use that for my height of the rectangle to approximate. So look, at it looks like this. And so I'm going to go like that. And like that. So there's my first rectangle. I'm now using the midpoint. And then so over here, I'm going to go use the midpoint between Five and nine, the midpoint is seven. So I'm going to put a point right up here. That's the point I'm using. And that's going to, um, I put it on the graph and then I draw another rectangle. So in your homework, you have to know how to draw rectangles <laughs> and you have to know how to find the area of rectangles. Let me finish this one up right here. So the midpoint we'll make this one be the blue ones, okay? And um, we are gonna add the area of these two rectangles. So there's the blue rectangle there, and this blue rectangle there. Of 
course, you could just count all the squares to get the areas, but um, you know, when it gets a little more difficult with fractions, we don't always want to count the squares. And so here it is, the area, which I'll underline in blue, is base times height of the first blue rectangle. The base is 4, and the base has been 4 for all these examples so far, times the height, which is 3. 4 times 3, that is the area of this rectangle right here. The area of this rectangle up here, we're going to go base, which is 4, times the height, which looks like it's 6. So this gives me 12 plus 24, which gives me 36. So this is using midpoints of each subinterval to approximate the displacement. And of course, this, since this is displacement, we're going to say 36 feet. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, this is dumb. I mean, this is these these approximations are, are dumb because we're missing that there and we're getting a lot more out here than we should. So what's up with that? Why would you do that? Well, if you worked for the federal government, this would be right on you would be happy. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to, um, in the next problem, shove more rectangles in there. We're going to um, have more subintervals. So that's what we plan on doing. Let's go ahead and do problem number four. Okay, so what are we doing on problem number four? We are going to use the right end point. So we're going back to the right end point of each subinterval, but look how many subintervals we're going to have. We are going to have four subintervals. So four subintervals. And so on ours, I mean, the length was eight. Um, that's how I'm getting the, um, well, I'm getting the four subintervals there. And so those four subintervals, you have to break eight, you have to divide eight by four, and you end up getting the first subinterval goes from one to three. Whoops, I'll just close bracket, and then from three to five, and from five to seven, and then from seven to nine. So those are all equal length. They each have two seconds in them. And we've broken up this time interval into four equal subintervals. So let me go ahead and draw the time interval that we're looking at from one to nine. And now we are using the right end point of each subinterval. So let's go ahead and partition this off with the subintervals too. We have this one right here, three, and then five, and then seven. Now here's the deal. We, you know, look at these, these rectangles each have a base of two now instead of four like our other examples. There's three things we can do. We can use the right end point, which we'll do here, of each of these four rectangles. The next problem, number five, we'll be using the left end point. And then number six, we'll be using the midpoint. Okay, just so you know what we're doing. Now, because we have four subintervals, it's going to be adding up four areas, but we're going to get more accurate approximation on that. So, how is that going to work? I'm taking the right end point. So here's the first rectangle here, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and show you that here are the endpoints of the rectangles. And so the right endpoint, what's it going to look like? I'm going to go ahead and use this as the height of the first rectangle. So it looks like this, and then, so there's the first rectangle. And then I'm going to use, here's my second subinterval from 3 to 5. I'm going to use this as the height. And so my next rectangle looks like this. 
And then here's my third rectangle. I'm going to use the right endpoint, which is this guy. I'm, going to, I'm getting the height from the velocity function. And this looks like this. And then the last one, I'll get my height from this right endpoint, which is 9 on the velocity function. And that rectangle looks like that. And what am I supposed to find? I'm supposed to find the area. So every time I go area, and this I believe we've been doing right with red. They both start with the letter R. And so now the rectangles look like this. Here's the next one right there. This one right here. And then the last one. Okay, now I'm going to throw in some notation that your book doesn't use. I like this notation just because it's descriptive. So the area, I'm going to do this when I'm using the right endpoint. I'm going to write this as R for right. Now when I'm using the left endpoint, I use an L. And when I'm using the midpoint, I use an M. Now there are four rectangles, so I'll go R sub Four. Now, you don't have to use that notation, but for me, it's very descriptive. It tells me what I'm doing, how many rectangles. And of course, I, it, it's for this time interval. So R4, which is just the area, I'm going to go base times height. So the base is 2 times the height, which is 3. So 2 times 3 plus the next one here, 2 times 1 plus 2 times 6 plus 2 times 5. Now, here's the deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and compute that. But before I do that, I want to show you something, you know, especially if you have 8 rectangles. Notice that the um, base is always 2. So really, now, I'm not saying you have to do it this way, but you could have just said, okay, it's always going to be 2, so I'll put a 2 there, and then I'll just put the heights, the right endpoint evaluations, inside here. So it's going to be 3 plus 1 plus 6 plus 5. So what I'm doing is I'm reporting these altitudes. 3 plus 1 plus 6 plus 5. So those four altitudes that you get from the right endpoint. Now, you don't have to do the problem that way, but it is kind of neat because, you know, I mean, you don't have to write two all those times there. So this is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 times two is 30. 30 feet is the displacement. Now, how does that compare with what we did before when it was two rectangles? We got 24 feet. And now we have 30 feet. And actually, the more rectangles you put under that curve in that time interval, the more accurate your approximation. And so look, that you know doesn't look as accurate as that. Okay, so that's something that we want to take note of. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some notation. Okay, and some of you might not like where this is going, but that's all right. I need to tell you some vocabulary. So our time interval is from 1 to 9. Okay, what lots of calculus books call the time interval, they'll say this is A and this is B. Now, the important thing is for your homework is that you understand how to do what we just did. This is just going to go into it a little more deep, and, and this is going to make some people feel uncomfortable. Okay, n equals 4. Okay, in this case, they're going to call it delta x. And our example should really say delta t, but I'll call it delta x here. Delta x happens to be the base of each rectangle, the measurement of the base. So it's, it's actually going to be 2 there. 
and delta x you can get from this formula, b minus a over n. Now, did we need to do that formula to figure out what, the, no, we didn't, but this is what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go with this. So delta x, and in our case, delta t, it's gonna be nine minus one over four. That is eight over four, which is two, which is the base of each rectangle. I'm really putting it close in there, okay. So that's the first thing to realize. Now, these numbers, okay, so let's look at, um, the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna look at regular partitions. Partitions. Of one to nine, or as a more general case, a to b. Um, those regular partitions look like this. They look like one, three, and I think I listed partitions off in the first problem. Three, five, five, seven, and seven nine. Okay, so those are those are the four partitions that we have there. Um, this first number, which is, you know, which is A, some books, a lot of books will call this X naught. Okay. And so this first number right here, this three, they're going to call it X1. And of course we have X1, which is three. And then the five is going to be X2, and then X2, X3, X3, X4. So, you know, you're, you're dividing this up into four sub-intervals, you'll have x0 through x4. And it may have been better if I put it right here. This is x0, x1, x2, x3, x4. Okay, I know this looks bad, but we're going to continue. These points here, x0, x1, x2, x3, x4, are called the grid points. So in some of your problems, they're gonna say list the grid points. In our problem, you would list them and it'd be one, three, five, seven, nine. What we've just computed, which is, let me take this onto another piece of paper for this one. So what we've just computed which I told you was R4, which your book's not gonna use that notation. R4 was two times, and it was three plus one plus six plus five. Okay, well, this R4, which was two times three, one, six, five, how we got that three, it was the height of the first rectangle, we went like this. The way you can get it is going V of 3, because that's 3 right there. And the next one was going V of 5. I want to say F, but the function is called V, so then this one would be plus F of 5 plus, oh, I'm saying F now, V of 7 plus V of nine. Now look at this, just like a math teacher to take something that was simple, we got the answer for, we should have just walked away from this problem. But now I'm like making it more complicated. So I mean, that sucks, doesn't it? So now let me go ahead and make it even more complicated. R4 is really, this two we said was delta X. Delta X. And then what we have here is three happened to be x sub 1. So this is v x1 plus v x2 plus v x3 plus v x4. So 
there's X4 and 9 and it was V, it probably goes off the range of the camera. So now I'm not done. R4 equals, this is really, we can do the summation notation where we go K equals 1 to 4 V of X sub K and then I'll put the delta X on the other side and I'll go delta X. And so there is what we've been doing here. This, this looks like what we're doing. So that's R4. Now, suppose you wanted to put N, like a hundred rectangles in there, then this would be, well, let's just say N rectangles, K equals one to N of V X sub K delta X. And this guy right here, you'll see in the book, they'll have little stars near the X's because they want to make it even more general. And I, I, I draw the line here when you're learning this for the first time. This is called the right Riemann sum. The right Riemann sum. And so you could actually in this, you know, so if you wanted to go R20 and you had the function, maybe you had what the function was, maybe it, you didn't just have the, the picture of it, but you actually had the, the equation of it. And it would be pretty simple. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be simple to do it by hand, but if you had 20 there, then you would have 20 rectangles and you'd get them by going V1, you know, VX1, VX2, all the way up to VX um, 20. Now we can do the same thing for the left Riemann sum and the midpoint Riemann sum. With the left Riemann sum you would have V of X0 all the way up to V of X3 for our example. Now I've showed you all this just because I'm supposed to show you all this. Are you going to be writing this out in your homework? Absolutely not. But um, the thing to get out of this is this is called a Riemann sum, and there's different kinds. This, is, this one's a right one. And um, the thing also to get out of this is what grid points are, because they'll ask you that, and then they'll say, what is the uh, delta x? Delta x is just the base of each rectangle. The other thing that I want to say is when you make the limit go in front of here as n goes to infinity as you start putting infinite amount of rectangles into that interval then that will give you the exact area under the curve and this summation which is sigma which reminds you of greek letter s then when it, you're doing infinitely many rectangle becomes the stretchy s that we saw earlier that's the integral sign and so maybe you're going whoa this is crazy you'll be integrating your velocity function and that delta x when you do the stretchy s becomes a dx now some of you are like i don't know what you're saying so i, I suppose i should have said you sh you should make the video go to problem number five when i got to like right here or so so for some of you this lecture the, this part of the lecture right here is the worst part okay because it's very theoretical but sometimes you need the notation especially if you're a technical person so you can grab onto things um and do proofs, and not only that, but um, when things get more complicated, you sometimes need the more complicated notation. Okay, but the bottom line is, okay, we, we've done it. You know, when we wrote 30 feet and we put a box around it, we were done with that problem. Let's go ahead and do some more problems. So that's as theoretical as it's going to get in this section. Let's go ahead and do problem number five. Now look, I'm now writing this. Um, we are trying to approximate the displacement, which is approximate the area under the curve. Now we, may, we didn't make the area go under the t-axis 
because then the displacement would be the net area and we don't want to start doing that yet, okay? So the left Riemann sum when n is four. Okay, so I'm gonna divide. We have our interval that goes from one to four, uh, to nine, and I'm gonna divide it into four equal subintervals, and we've done that in the last problem, so I'm just kind of doing what I did on the last problem. And we'll try to make this problem go a lot faster than the last one. We're not gonna get all theoretical at the end of this. Okay, now what am I using? I'm using, for each subinterval, the left endpoint. So I'm using this for the height, that for the height of the second rectangle, this is going to be the height of the third rectangle, and that is going to be the height of the fourth rectangle. I'm not using the nine, but this is left. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw those, those rectangles. The, the first rectangle is actually a square. There's nothing significant about that. It just happens to be that. There's the second rectangle, and the third one's going to go up there. And the fourth one um, oh I messed that up great okay so that's good it's good when you mess up on video because you know just wasn't really come on okay there it is good thing I have the white out okay <laughs> let's rewind that okay um, there it is there's the first rectangle, which is gotten from the left endpoint. The second rectangle is gotten from that left endpoint. The third rectangle, I can almost do these without a ruler, but I better just use a ruler. Okay, so there is the left endpoint there, and then the left endpoint on this one brings it up here for the fourth rectangle. Let's see if I can do it without a, a ruler. Yeah, I can. Okay, now, um, what was our color for the left endpoint. I think it was green. So I'm trying to find the area of these green rectangles. Um, that's going to give me the left Riemann sum. Um, I'm going to use the, the notation the book doesn't use. They're going to say, well, this is L4 and it's just going to be base times height, base times height, base times height. So maybe you can pause the video and, you know, do some of the problems, you know, like number five and then number six when we get to it, etc. So we have base times the height for this one. So that one was the square. And then the next one is base times the height. So the height of the second rectangle is three. The height of the third rectangle is one, and the height of the fourth rectangle is six. So two times six. And now we could have actually factored the two out front, but I didn't do that this time. So this is like what? Four plus six plus two plus 12. And so what am I getting here? I'm getting um, 24 feet. For the approximate area under that curve. Okay, let's continue to do some more problems. Um, I think I may have chosen to do too many problems for this lecture, but maybe too many is better than too few. Okay, find um, the midpoint Riemann sum. Okay, so we'll go like this. And we do the same partitions we did in the last problem. And then this one right here is, okay, so you do see the four rectangles. Well, we don't see the rectangles yet, but we do see their bases. And then I'm gonna look, look at the midpoints. So here's, you know, here's, we've been doing this right here, so I'll be consistent. And so what do we have? We have, here's the midpoint too. I'm going to put a dot right there, so that's going to be the height of the first rectangle. And then the midpoint here is 
right there, the height of that, and the midpoint 6, there's the height of the next one, and the midpoint 8, there's the height of that one. So let's see if we can, um, I'm going to see if I can do this without messing up like I did last time. So the camera just randomly stopped. That's, that's always a good thing. Good thing I heard the beeper or I'd be doing the lecture and um, not recording it. That, that's beautiful. So there's the, um, I used the midpoint to get the height of those four rectangles. And so I have that. I'm going to finish, com completely finish the rectangles. A lot of this lecture, even though this lecture is probably going to seem kind of long, um, a lot of it is just me drawing pictures of rectangles and trying to do like a super neat job. Okay, so that's that's what you're going to be doing in your homework. You're going to be drawing rectangles. And so the midpoint, using the midpoint, we're going to be finding the area of these four rectangles. Okay, so how am I going to do that? I'm going to write M4, the notation that I use. And then I'm going to say um, base times height. So this is two times. The, so the height of the first one is four. And the next one's base times. The height of the second one is one. And the third one, the height of that one is five. So two times five. And the fourth one, the height of that one is six. So two times six. So what has this given us? This has given us an eight plus a two plus a ten plus a twelve. So that's 10, 20, 32. 32 happens to be the approximate area under that curve. And last time when we did the midpoint rule, I believe we got 36. Okay, we'll do some comparisons at the very end. Okay, so this is probably not needed, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and do 7, 8, and 9 are going to be right, left, and midpoint Riemann sums, and I'm going to let n equal 8. And um, let's see if we can do this. So if n equals 8 from this time interval from 1 to 9, and there's 8 seconds in that time interval, it just means that I'm going to partition this um, into eight sub intervals and they're all going to be one second a piece. So I'm going to go ahead and draw I suppose I'll start over here um, a line each rectangle is going to have a width the Delta X as we were calling it is going to be um, one So that's how it looks Maybe things can go faster if I don't use the ruler now to draw the heights. Right, Riemann sum. So here are um, what we have. I'm making sure that I can get my other ones when I need them. Okay, sorry for this. Okay, so we have these. Your book. Not all books will call these that, but these are your grid points. Those are your grid points, and you are going to use the right, um, the right number from each sub-interval to do the height of the rectangle. So be, to go faster on this, I'm going to go ahead and just do this. So the right one, so I'm going to use this for the first one. I'm going to not use the ruler, so I think we can do that. And then this one is the right one is right here. So here's your rectangle. And then the right one for this one is four. And then the right one for this one is five. So I have two squares there. And the right one for this interval is the six. So we're going to make it go like that, down like that. And the right one for this is seven. And then eight looks like that. And nine looks like that. And so I think we were doing the right ones in red. So I'm going to do the area of these guys here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight rectangles. Okay, um, now we're going to speed things up even more. So this is R8. It's going to be 
base times height. Now each of the bases are one, so I'm gonna take that one and factor it out front. And so I just need to do the heights of each one. So the first one has height of four, and then three, and then one and one, and then one, two, three, four, five, five, and six, and six, and five. So you add those all up. 12, 22, 22, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30, 30. So you get 31 feet. Okay, let's go ahead and do the left Riemann sum when n equals 8 for problem number 8. And so you notice, well, let's actually just show you the time lapse here. So look what's happening here. We have two rectangles, four, uh, four rectangles, eight rectangles. And as it's happening, you went 24, 30, 31. We're getting a more approximate, um, a, a more, yes, the approximation is getting better. And, you know, if we put 16 in there, well, you yeah, know, we don't want to do that because that's a lot of drawing. You would get something even more accurate. That's the word I was looking for than 31 feet. Okay, so let's go ahead and do left Riemann sum. Okay, left Riemann sum. What are we going to do? So we're going L8. So we partition this into eight. I know what you're thinking. He's doing this without a ruler. It's the long ones that are tricky. Oh, right when I said that, I started curving. This is just gonna be a lot faster. Okay, so I have these, these. Um, I still will do this because, you know, I know some people want me to be consistent here. Okay, so those are my grid points, and um, my delta x is 1, you know, that's the, the base of each rectangle. And I'm going to go ahead and draw these rectangles from the left side. So this interval here, now it's, it's this one that I'm going to draw from. So there, and then the next one is this guy here. And then the next one happens to be this one there. And then this interval, the rectangle is going to be there. This interval, oh yeah, this is a bummer about this one here. The left one is this one right here, so we're losing a lot of that area. And then we have that one, and then that one. And I'm always using a, the function to show me. So like at 8, that's the height, and I'm going to go like that. And so there's my 8 rectangles. Um, my 8 rectangles are going to be green. And I'm going to go ahead and approximate the areas. I'm going to add them all up. And I know that each of them have a um, base of 1. And I'm seeing how I'm doing. Okay, that looks like it's recording well. And so I'm just going to look at the heights of them. So this is going to be 2 plus 4 plus. So this, this one has a height of 2, 4. And then this is high, has a height of 3, 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus Five plus six plus six. Twelve, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty-two. This looks like let me try that again. Twelve, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, and then plus six is twenty-eight. Twelve. Okay, it's twenty-eight feet. So there it is. And so, I mean, you could also get 28 in this by counting the squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. I mean, we probably don't want to do that, especially when they get a little more complicated or you're using the square root graph, which we'll see later. Okay, let's go ahead and do this last one here um, of this type. Um, we are, we have n equals 8, so here's your grid points right here. 
you know, your book would say, oh, that's X0, and that's X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, X6, X7, X8. No. Is that going to help us get the answer any better? No, it's not. Let's go ahead and partition it. So here's our rectangles. They're going to look like that. And so we'll, um, let's take that off. This will look like this. This. This one's going to be a little trickier. Okay, so watch what's going to happen. The height of the first one. Okay, wow. Um, this would, the midpoint, we're going to use the midpoint of that first sub, sub interval. So the midpoint is one and a half. One and a half brings you right up about there, which looks like it's three. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that rectangle. The next interval is two and a half is the midpoint. Two and a half brings you right here. Oh, look at that. And so that rectangle is going to look like that. Three and a half is going to bring you right here, thankfully. It's going to be right at have a height of two. Four and a half brings you right down there. Here it is. And so that rectangle is going to look like that. Wow. And I'll color them in. Five and a half, its height is going to be right about here. Now it's a little trickier when you're, you know, when things are on the half, okay? And so then what do we have? We have six and a half is going to bring us right up here. And I try to make the graph, you know, where you can kind of see it's going to be at the one half. And, you know, there it is. Seven and a half is going to put you um, right up here at this, at this one right here. Here's seven and a half, the height. And then eight and a half brings you right here. Okay, those rectangles are going to be colored blue for a midpoint. Okay. There are eight rectangles. They each have a base of one. So M8 is one, and I'll factor that out, and then I'm just going to report each of the heights. So that would be three plus three and a half. I'll write it like that, plus 2, plus, that one has height of 1 half, plus this one, height of 3, plus um, this one has height of 5 and a half, um, plus 7, plus 5 and a half, plus 7, plus 5 and a half. So I kind of lost... Um, my, my spacing there. So this is going to give me 11 plus 4 is 15, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. It's going to give me 30 feet for the dis so it's a displacement that it's representing. Wow, so we just did those nine examples. We threw a lot of theory in there when we did those nine examples. Now, let us go ahead and show you this right here. Now, I used red without knowing that I would be using that for the right Riemann sum, but oh well. So our deal is we want to compute the exact area sometimes, okay? Now all we know how to do is do rectangles, and this is this is the last nine problems. But look what's happening. I mean, like when you had R2, L2, M2, those were bad estimates. But now look at R8, L8, M8. They are all kind of in the same neighborhood. And I bet if we went R16, L16, M16, if we were crazy enough to do that on this graph, they would even be closer together. So it just goes to show that if you take the limit of any one of these, so if you take the limit of Rn as n goes to infinity, you get the exact displacement or the exact area. And that is what the integral is going to give us. And we've already seen integrals, so um, that is what's going to happen. In this section, you're not going to be taking the limit as n goes to infinity. You're just going to be computing some Riemann sums. 
And sometimes Riemann sums are the only way you can do a particular application problem. And we will look at um, an example of that as our last example. Because the numbering is getting pretty high and we're going to do a, a different, you know, the problems are going to be worded a little differently, I'm going to start the numbering at 1. Um, your book will sometimes have you draw the graph, but I kind of just already have it drawn. And they're going to ask you to do a few things here. They're going to ask you to calculate um, delta x and the grid points and things like that. So let's see if we can do this. Illustrate the right Riemann sum. That means draw some rectangles. Is it an underestimate or an overestimate? Now on the last problem, it was kind of hard to see that, but when the graph is just increasing or you know just strictly decreasing, that's going to be pretty easy to answer. And then calculate the right Riemann sum. Okay, and look at how it says n equals 2, so we are calculating r2, the sum of the area of two rectangles. And the interval goes from 1 to 4, so here's 1, 2, 3, 4, and um, let's see what we're going to do. So we're going from, so here our interval is this, 1 to 4. So the problem stated a little differently. It's not talking about the displacement. It has x instead of t. Um, but it's pretty much going to be the same problems. I could have just said, okay, we're done with this section on the lecture, but I think I need to walk through some more of these because this is such a weird concept for some of you guys. So we are going to take our, our delta x because that's what they're asking us to compute. Now, remember the formula. I mean, some of you already know what it is. You're going to divide that interval, the interval that's 1 to 4, into two equal pieces. So you might, you know, all you would have to do is find the halfway point between 1 and 4. But if you want it to be all official, you can say that's b minus a over n. And once again, a lot of you can do it without this formula. So this is 4 minus 1 over 2, which is 3 halves. Um, so that is how I'm doing it. And is that what I did on the other one? I want to make sure that I wrote that formula down. B minus A, so 9 minus 1. Three halves. Oh, okay, so three, ah, 3 halves tells me, sorry, I was, I was having a, Weird moment there. Okay. Three halves. I was like looking at three halves and I'm like, what? No, no. This tells me the, um, we've been calling it the base, the base of each rectangle. Okay. So in, in another way of saying that is one and a half. Okay. So one and a half, if that helps you. 1.5. So the, the base of the first one, you're going to go all the way, not, not to 2, but you're going to go to 2.5. You're going to go right here. And that's where you're going to draw. You're going to divide this like this. Okay. So that's where your two rectangles are going to be. The first one's going to go, you know, have a base going from 1 to 2.5, and the next one's going to be 2.5 to 4. So this is, let's call it 2.5, why not? So it says calculate delta x. Delta x, we already calculated. That is the base of each rectangle. And delta x in this case is going to be um, 1.5. Let's just say 1.5. And then it says, um, and the grid points. What are the grid points? The grid points in this example are 1. 2.5 and 4. And so when they say, hey, um, find the grid points, you could just say 1, 2.5, 4. I mean, if you wanted to be all official, you could say x0 is 1, x1 is 2.5, and x2, which is, you would go up to, is 4. Okay, illustrate the right Riemann sum. The right Riemann sum means I'm going to, here's my first rectangle here, and you are going to get the height from the right, which is this one right here. Okay, so they want you to illustrate it this one's going to be a little bit 
different. So, I mean, that's another reason for me to do this. The, the right one on this one is going to be up here, so I'm going to go all the way up to that. So there's the two rectangles. I've illustrated it, and I'm, I'll use the color here. So we're going to um, find the area of these guys right here, and there it goes. Um, is this an underestimate or an overestimate? So are we, well, our original thing is we're trying to get the area under this original curve here. Are we overestimating it with our rectangles or underestimating? And obviously you can see um, the rectangles come outside of it. So this right here, and I'll just circle it, we are overestimating. Calculate the right Riemann sum. Okay, so how am I going to do this? Um, I'm going to go base times height. So here's the base. Um, sorry. The base of each rectangle is delta x. And I can write the delta x there. I think books sometimes write that. I'll just write what it is. It's one and a half. So I'll go 1.5. Now how do I get the height of that first rectangle? Well, you know, that's kind of a weird spot. And the way you get the height of that first rectangle is by going um, f of 2.5. So I'll write that f of 2.5. Plus, the next one's going to be have a base of 1.5. And then to get the height of the second one, you're going to go this right here. So let me illustrate the fact that this here is f. You're going to go f of 4. f of 4. Now f is just the square root. So this Riemann sum, the first rectangle has a base of 1.5 and has the height of square root of 2.5. And then the second one is has a base of 1.5 and has a height of um, the square root of 4, which is 2. So we would put this into our calculator and um, I'm going to round to three decimal places so maybe you know that should be included in the instructions I have 4 R2 5.372 so there it is and we didn't you know this is not feed or anything they just want us to estimate the area under the curve from 1 to 4 and so there it is 5.3 Seven two, which is an overestimate. Okay, let's go ahead and do the problem with the same function. And we've changed things around now. What have we changed around? We've changed around this. This says n equals 3. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4. The interval still goes from 1 to 4. But now we are partitioning it into three equal subintervals, and that's pretty easy to do. You can go b, which is 4, minus a, so 4 minus 1 over 3, so that's just going to give you every rectangle is going to have a base of 1. Okay. And it says um, calculate delta x. Well, we can see what delta x is now. Delta x is not 1.5 like in the last example, but it's just going to be 1. And the grid points are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Illustrate the left Riemann sum. So the left Riemann sum, we have three rectangles. The first rectangle is going to have the height from the left part of that sub, sub interval. So we go right here, and there it is. Here's the second rectangle. We're going to get its height from the left one. We go up to the function, and we draw that. And then the third one, we get its height from the left side. And um, we were using green for the left one. I'm going to color those rectangles in green. 
So is this an, we've illustrated it, part B is done, part C it asks, is it an underestimate or an overestimate of the area under the original curve from one to four? And actually it's an underestimate because it's missing those little, they look like triangles, but they're not. So this is an underestimate. Calculate the left Riemann sum. Okay, so L, and what I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna say three because it's three rectangles. And each um, rectangle has a base of one. I'm gonna just factor that out to the front. And now I just need the height here, the height there, and the height there. And how do I get it? By going F of one. I'll write it out, F of one plus F of two plus F of three. And so this is really one times the square root of one plus the square root of two, because this is my F right here. Let me put that on the graph and plus the square root of three, and which you would put this into your calculator and um, we would round, I'll say three decimal places. And so when I did this on my calculator for L3, I got four, 0.146. So hopefully that's, I pushed the buttons right. And um, the right Riemann sum when we did two rectangles was 5.372. We expect this to be lower, 4.146, because this is an underestimate. Okay, let's go ahead and do problem number three. Problem number three looks like this. So, this one says n equals three, just like the last one. So when n equals three, here's one, two, three, four, um, you're gonna have kind of the same picture. It's gonna start off the same as the last problem. Where it looks like that, this is f. And in fact, our answer for, you know, what is delta x, which is the base of each rectangle, that's gonna be one and your Grid points are one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm only mimicking what's, what's being asked in the book. The book might also ask you to draw the original graph. Okay, illustrate the midpoint Riemann sum. Well, the midpoint, this first rectangle, you're gonna get its height from this midpoint, which is like 1.5 and it's gonna be that's going to be the height that you're going to use. And so the midpoint here is um, 2.5. And the midpoint here is 3.5. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw these rectangles. And actually with the midpoint, they're not going to ask question C. So I'm sorry I even put it here. They're not gonna ask that because it's not as obvious if it's gonna be an overestimate or an underestimate. It might be an overestimate, but when they, when they do midpoint on an increasing or decreasing function in your homework, they will not ask that. So don't think I crossed it out because I was like, I'm lazy, I don't wanna do that. I am lazy and I don't wanna do that. So I guess that is right. So look at this, here's the the three rectangles were that we're trying to use to approximate the area under the curve from one to four. And so that's part B. Part D, which should really be called part C, is this, that M3, because there's the three there, using three rectangles, we, each of these rectangles have a base of one, and then the height of the first one's gonna be f of 1.5. That's going to tell you what that height is. The next one's going to be f of 2.5. And the last one is f of 3.5. So this is going to be 1 times the square root of 1.5 plus the square root of 2.5 plus the square root of 3.5. So you put that into your calculator, you end up getting 
And that is in between 4.146 and 5.372, which were, you know, left and right. And, and the right one, we only used um, two rectangles. So what is the actual area under the curve from 1 to 4? You will be able to figure that out um, in this chapter. But FYI, just in case you were wondering, the average, not the average, the actual area from 1 to 4 is 4 and 2 thirds, or we could say 4.6 repeating. So that is, this is the actual area. And we'll be using anti-differentiation to figure that out. Okay, well, I know this lecture is running long. I also promised to only do, um, what was it? Let me just check here in my books here. I think I sent an email to you guys. Like, no more than 255 minutes a week for this, because that breaks down into... 85 times 3. So don't, you know, if this lecture runs a little long and you're, you're a little angry about that, I wanted to do a lot of problems on this. And secondly, I, I am keeping track of times, weekly times. So then, like, if something runs too long on Monday and Wednesday, then Friday's not going to be as long. Okay, let's go ahead and do problem number four. So this is what we're talking about. And you'll get a problem like this in your homework as well. Um, where... You've got a bug on a number line, T is seconds, S is feet, velocity is feet per second. So lots of times in the real world, you're going to be given data that has just some points. Like we have, you know, a certain day, you know, like right now we're doing, we're going through the coronavirus and there's like, you know, here's the day, here's how many confirmed cases. And, you know, I'm not saying this is the coronavirus, but in the real world, sometimes it's a little bit more numerical than always having the exact function. So it says, sketch a smooth curve passing through the data points. Okay, so the data points we have, okay, so this is times and this is velocity. So we have zero, one. Let me go ahead and do that in a darker ink here. So zero, one is right here. And then we have, Two, three. So two, three. And then four, five. Four is time. Five is height. And then six, eight. And then eight, eleven. And then ten, twelve. Okay, so that's what your data points look like. And in the real world, this is often the case. And so they says sketch a smooth curve passing through the data points. So that might make some of you guys feel uncomfortable because you're like, well, what should my curve look like? Should I put some wiggles in between one and two? Yes, you can. As long as it's smooth, smooth means it's not discontinuous and it's differentiable, which means there's no sharp points or cuts, you know, like the absolute value. So here it is. I'm just going to go ahead and draw the graph look like uh, I don't know how it looks. There it is. Okay. So, you know, maybe you went like this and you put something and made it go way up there and come down here through that and then made it, you know, so, I mean, the answers are not unique for that. Then they ask two questions. Okay. The two questions are approximate the displacement from zero to 10. Now, how can we do that when we don't even know what the graph looks like? And we just made that up, by the way. But it says using the right and left Riemann sums. So there's the right Riemann sum. And the left one we'll do in green. So, wow, how am I going to do this? I'll tell you how you're going to do this. Is you are going to approximate the displacement using the right and, oh, and they say n equals 5. Good. So from 0 to 10, if n equals 5, you can go like this. You can say my delta x is going to equal b minus a over n, if you want. And some of you already know how you're going to divide things. 10 minus 0 over 5, your intervals are going to be 2. 
your delta x is 2. Basically, it just means this. We are interested in approximating the area under a curve we don't even know about from 0 to 10. So from there's 10. And zero is over here. Okay, so we're approximating this area here. And we're doing it with five rectangles. And um, the base of each rectangle is two. So the next rectangle is going to have a border here. And then we have here. Okay, the first thing it tells me to do is use the right Riemann sum. So R five for the rectangles. So what, how am I going to do? So a lot of you could probably turn this off and you could figure out what it, what it, how to get the answer. So here's my first rectangle. I'm going to use the right endpoint of that sub interval. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and draw the rectangle. Never asked me to do that. So there's the first rectangle and the second one use the right So with the graph I looked at, it looks like this is going to be an overestimate, but we really don't know what the graph looks like, so that's kind of unfair to ask that, and it's not asked. So here it is. I'm trying to, so my the finish up the first part of this problem, I am going to find the area of those five rectangles. I know each of those five rectangles have a base of two. I'm going to factor that out. I don't know if I can fit the work here. I might be able to. And now I'm going to go ahead and report the heights. So the heights are, you know, and this, this right here is V. So I can say V of two plus V of four. We can write all that out, but really the height of the first one is three. The height of the second one is one, two, that, well, I can see five, three plus five plus. The third one has height of eight plus the fourth one has height of 11 and the fifth one has the height of 12 and so what do we end up getting if I do I really want to I'm not going to use them I'm going to use a calculator 12 plus 11 plus 8 plus 5 plus 3 times 2 and that gives me 78 78 Approximate the displacement, 78 feet. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the last one because we didn't do the left Riemann sum. Let's go find the left Riemann sum using five rectangles. Um, so I have the same picture drawn here. And um, here's the base of each of the five rectangles. There's the first one, the second one, the third one fourth one, the fifth one. And now I'm going to use the left endpoints. And so I'll go ahead and draw, draw those rectangles here. Here's the first left endpoint. It is 0, 1. So here's our first rectangle right here. And then the next one. So I'll go ahead and draw these, these rectangles. There should be five rectangles. That's what L5 is. There's the top one right there. And I believe green was the color for the left ones. So let's, let's go ahead and find out what the area of these five rectangles happen to be. Okay, um, area of a rectangle is base times the height, and really each of these five rectangles has the same base, the base of two. So I'm just going to go ahead and factor that out like I've been doing in the problems here. And the height of the first one is one, so I have one, and then this one has a height of three, and this one has a height of five. The next one has the height of eight. And this last rectangle here has the height of 11. And I'm using the left endpoints. Okay, so I have two times 19, and then we have 24. 
4 plus 4 is 28. 2 times 28 is 56. The problem asks me to um, approximate the displacement. This is a bug on the number line. Well, the displacement using the left Riemann sum would be 56 feet. And as you can see, the estimate that we used here is, um, based on this picture, is an underestimate. The estimate that we used for the right Riemann sum is an overestimate. So we have 78 versus 56. Now you might be thinking this is pretty stupid. You know, I mean, why, why are we doing this? Because in the real world, we're given lots of data you know in the real world we don't always just get a nice function we just get data points and from these six data points the best we can do for displacement or just net change in general it doesn't have to be a bug on a number line it could be the temperature change or the hour of daylight's hour of daylight in a day um and we're tracking it through the years um if we're just looking for a net change given just a table of information, this is the best way that we can do, it, do this using the Riemann sums. So study hard, keep up with your homework, and have a good day.